psalm taste and see the goodness of the lord goodness of the lord s your words lord are spirit and life you have the words of everlasting life alleluia alleluia saint augustinian being drawn by the father do not think that you are drawn unwillingly the mind is also drawn by love it may be said to us how do i believe by will if i am drawn I say it is not enough by will. You are also drawn by pleasure. What does it mean to be drawn by pleasure? Take delight in the Lord, and he will grant you your heart's requests. There is a certain pleasure of the heart to which that heavenly is sweet bread. Moreover, if it was allowed a poet to say, his own pleasure draws each man, not need but pleasure, not obligation but delight, how much more forcefully ought we to say that a man is drawn to drawn Christ who delights in truth, delights in happiness, delights in justice, delights in eternal life, and all this is Christ. Give me one who loves, and he feels what I am saying. Give me one who desires, give me one who hungers, give me one traveling and thirsting in this solitude, and sighing for the fountain of an eternal homeland. Give me such a one, and he knows what I am saying. Therefore, if those things which amid earthly delights and pleasures are revealed to those who love them draw them, because it is true that his own pleasure draws every man, does not Christ, revealed by the Father, draw? For what does the soul desire more strongly than the truth? And I will raise him up on the last day. I deliver to him what he loves. I deliver what he hopes for. He will see what he has believed in while still not seeing. He will eat what he hungers for. He will be filled with that for which he thirsts. Where? In the resurrection of the dead. For I will raise him up on the last day. Catholic Commentary on Today's Liturgical Gospel Reading John 6, verses 60 to 69. Some of Jesus' disciples refuse his words about his body and blood. They describe his saying as hard, as unacceptable. Now they are murmuring like the Israelites in the wilderness and the Jews who objected to Jesus' teaching. Instead of watering down his teaching, Jesus challenges them. Does this shock you? What if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? Jesus, the Son of Man and Bread of Life, has come down from heaven and will offer his flesh and blood as eternal food. If these disciples cannot accept that Jesus came down from heaven, took flesh, and commands his followers to eat his flesh and drink his blood, how will they accept his returning to the Father by means of his death on the cross and resurrection? Jesus must offer his flesh for the world's salvation on the cross, displaying his love for the Father and the Father's love for the world. After being gloriously transformed in the resurrection, Jesus' flesh will be apt for heavenly existence, and having ascended to glory, become spiritual food for believers. The remedy for these disciples is to be more spiritual, that is, to believe with a deep faith, born of the Spirit. It is the Spirit that gives life, while the flesh is of no avail. These disciples should not make Jesus conform to their human standards, but should conform themselves to his Spirit-filled, life-giving teachings the words of spirit and life. As St. Cyril of Alexandria comments, it is not the nature of the flesh that renders the spirit life-giving, but the might of the spirit that makes the body life-giving. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit that is both spiritual and of the spirit, and they are life. With some of his disciples now rebelling, Jesus, who knows all things pertaining to his mission, knew from the beginning the ones who would not believe and the one who would betray him. The power to believe is found in love. The light of divine truth exceeds our mind's power. It cannot be mastered by us. Although far beyond our mind's power, the divine truth is attractive, and those who yield to its light yield to its lovableness. On our part, this yielding to the divine light is an act of the will. Conversely, those who love themselves to the point that they are unwilling to risk surrendering to the light will never know what it is to believe. They resist the Father's work. Hence Jesus reaffirms, For this reason I have told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted him by my Father. Jesus' words are too much for these disciples. Like the rich young man who cannot accept Jesus' teachings on wealth and discipleship, many disciples left him because of these teachings. Jesus then turns to his inner circle of twelve and asks them if they also want to leave. We hear Peter's famous confession of faith in Jesus. By asking, To whom shall we go? He affirms that apart from Jesus there is nothing truly worthwhile. Jesus' teachings are the words of eternal life. 
And Peter continues, We have come to believe and are convinced that you are the Holy One of God. In the scriptures, holiness is the attribute proper to God, the Holy One. Similarly, in John's Gospel, only the Father, the Holy Spirit, and Jesus are called holy. By calling Jesus the Holy One of God, Peter professes Jesus' divinity. He has yielded in love to the beauty of the light and has experienced its truth. While Peter speaks as leader of the Twelve, we have come to believe Jesus knows that not all of the Twelve agree. Jesus speaks figuratively of a devil in their midst, referring to Judas, one of Jesus' closest disciples, a member of the Twelve. Reflection and Application John 6 integrates Jesus' gift of his body and blood in the Eucharist with his identity as God's word and wisdom. It is fair to say that since the Reformation Catholics, despite recent papal exhortations, have not fed on the word of God in Scripture as they have frequented the Eucharist. Vatican II has offered us a reminder of the relation of these two foods given to us by and as God. The Church has always venerated the divine Scriptures just as she venerates the body of the Lord since, especially in the sacred liturgy, she unceasingly receives and offers to the faithful the bread of life from the table both of God's word and of Christ's body. While scripture is not a sacrament in the technical sense, it is a privileged, divinely inspired means by which faithful readers can truly encounter the Lord Jesus. Our challenge is to recognize the word of God, speaking in the scriptures, and present substantially in the Eucharist. We should strive to avoid approaching these two gifts with a sense of routine, which can keep us from experiencing their transforming effect. From the scriptures, we learn how to experience the attractiveness of God's word and to come to the Eucharist with a hunger and thirst to take him in as our light, our joy, our life-sustaining food. Pope Benedict the Sixteenth quotes St. Jerome, We are reading the sacred scriptures. For me, the gospel is the body of Christ. For me, the holy scriptures are his teaching. From the Gospel of John Catholic Commentary, below is the actual Gospel reading. Rebellion among Jesus' followers. Then many of his disciples who were listening said, This saying is hard. Who can accept it? Since Jesus knew that his disciples were murmuring about this, he said to them, Does this shock you? What if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? It is the Spirit that gives life, while the flesh is of no avail. The words I have spoken to you are Spirit and life. But there are some of you who do not believe. Jesus knew from the beginning the ones who would not believe and the one who would betray him. And he said, For this reason I have told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted him by my Father. As a result of this, many of his disciples returned to their former way of life and no longer accompanied him. Jesus then said to the twelve, Do you also want to leave? And Simon Peter answered him, Master, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and are convinced that you are the Holy One of God. Jesus answered them, Did I not choose you twelve? Yet is not one of you a devil? He was referring to Judas, son of Simon the Iscariot. It was he who would betray him, one of the twelve. Old Testament, Isaiah 41, verses 13 to 20. New Testament, Matthew 16, verses 13 to 20. 1916, 26. Catechism, Signs of Bread and Wine, 1336. The Lord's Prayer 2765 to 66